Hey friends, it's the Drive to School podcast. I'm Pastor Goodman. I'm the content executive here at Higher Things and joining me today, you know him, you love him, you deeply, deeply appreciate him. It is Pastor Hall. How you doing, my friend? Uh, deeply appreciating is too great a compliment, brother. I'm fantastic. If I were any better, I would be you. Aim way higher, my friend, but also <laughs> nobody nobody tries to be shallowly appreciated either. So we, we have to we have to go for it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, Pastor, I've been sinning a lot later. Tell me, uh, tell me a story about Luther and forgiveness. Oh man, L- Luther, he never really talks about forgiveness much. You know, it's foreign not really concept, pick, right? You know, <laughs> he, he didn't really change his name to talk about it a lot. You know, that Eleutheros, the freed man, freedom, forgiveness. And it, it hit me, you know, what does it mean to be freed in forgiveness? And, you know, I just covered this past week that Matthew 18 text, the parable of the unforgiving servant. And there's really not much gospel in there. It's kind of, you know, Jesus saying, you better forgive just like my father forgives you. But the thing is, when Jesus says this phrase to Peter, he says 70 times, seven times. What what does this mean? What's he talking about? Is it this new command like from John 13, you know, love one another as I have loved you? And really what is Jesus saying to Peter is, I'm not, I'm actually going to gift you this forgiven life now. That not only do you know you're forgiven, but you know you're forgiven so much in such a deep way, such a freeing way, you, you can't do anything but forgive other people. It's just what you do. And then you are daily seeking that forgiveness for yourself. That's the only thing you want to hear every day is I am forgiven because you don't want to hear and it's not that you hate the law but the law is there but that's not that's not your big thing you just want to hear i'm forgiven because i've broken that i wanted to keep that today i tried i tried my hardest but by the time i got out of bed i already failed and i want to hear that christ loves me the father loves me that i'm forgiven and it's still forgiven no matter how many times I do it? 70 times, seven times. Right. We're not aiming for the bare minimum here. In fact, this is actually what lets you get a lot closer to the law. If there is no word of forgiveness, you spend your whole life running from the law, trying to excuse away the law, justify, blame somebody else. There's always a trick somewhere in our little tool belt to get us further away from the law. But in this word of forgiveness, we actually get to stand a whole lot closer to it because I know it's going to call me a sinner. I'm still going to try. But but my, my hope, though, is that my identity has to be in Christ and the forgiveness of right. sin. Well, and that's the thing. And there's a big difference between excuse and forgiven. Mm. God doesn't like when you sneeze, people, you say, excuse me, because it wasn't, it's not like you cognitive. Now, maybe you can, I can't, I can't just sneeze on command, but mm. you know, most of us try to prevent sneezing because we, we feel embarrassed. You know, we do the, the little lady sees that thing. I don't do that. When I sneeze the whole, the whole car shakes. Um, Glad to you, hear that. you say, excuse me. And everyone goes, it's not a big deal. Or if you burp, oh, excuse me, that's not a big deal. Or if you're late for a meeting because there's traffic, pardon me. So when we come to God, we're not asking to be excused, meaning I have all these reasons this has happened. Rather, it's just all laid out there. And God doesn't excuse it. He doesn't say, oh, it's not a big deal. In fact, it is a big deal, such a big deal. I put my son to death on the cross for it. And it's forgiven. It's forgotten. It's remembered no more. And Luther makes that point in the fifth petition of the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our trespasses. This reality that God doesn't hold anything back. He just forgives you. He doesn't try to dance around it. He doesn't um, offer you like a a little help to feel forgiven. He absolutely 100% unconditionally forgives you by grace alone. And now because you haven't been excused, but absolved, cleansed, Mm -hmm. the debt canceled. Now you don't go around excusing other people. You go around freeing them in forgiveness so that they have that same joy. Right. You, you've mentioned, too, there's a difference between feeling forgiving and being forgiven. How do you how do you sort of hold that distinction up there? Well, the reality is we don't always feel forgiven right? because the devil continues harassing us. The world keeps reminding us of our sin. The old Adam continues trying to sin. And then you have the reality of just death always surrounding you. We don't feel 
this because because we always want to try to do like Adam and Eve did and make fig leaves for ourselves. I want to try to cover up and make something of this. But the forgiveness isn't dependent on you feeling it. The forgiveness is dependent upon Christ's determination for you, that he is determined to love you and forgive you in spite of yourself. So he's going to keep telling you you're forgiven. And when you feel it one day, that's awesome. It's not a bad thing to feel forgiven. It's actually amazing. Yeah. But don't doubt and despair, are you, just because you're not, you're still feeling the weight of your sin. And it's even feeling the weight of that sin just sends you back to Jesus again, brings right. you back to Christ to say, tell me I'm forgiven again. Right. So your feelings yeah, aren't a bad thing. It's just you can't measure by them. Yeah. You can't measure this, and but Christ is always going to tell you you're forgiven. He's not going to get tired of saying that to you. Your pastor's not going to get tired of saying it to you. He's going to keep saying you are forgiven every Sunday, and, and every time he sees you, every time you go to confession absolution, you're forgiven. If it's, uh, okay, you've said you've done this sin 488 times. Well, you got two more times. So I think my math's right there. But no, it's like you can just keep, it's not a license to do what you want. But rather, yeah, as you keep struggling, you're going to keep hearing the same thing on Sunday. It's not going to change. So that's a gift, too, because, I mean, when, when Sunday becomes something other than forgiveness, it, it's always going to be this these sinners in a box. And they're, they're immediate. It's, it's excuse or blame, uh, because right. if there's not the gospel, then how we treat each other is going to change right away. Yeah. Well, and what we do is we hold on to things. Grudges start forming. Camps start forming. Instead of the reality, I'm forgiven, you're forgiven the blood of Christ stains both of us. And it, it's like Paul says in I think it's Ephesians 5, we don't struggle with flesh and blood, but against those cosmic powers of darkness and the, the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. That's our struggle. We struggle with my own doubts and anxieties. And Christ comes and reminds us, reminds you and me, hey, you're forgiven. The debt's canceled. I've freed you. So there's nothing to worry about. <laughs> you can just laugh and rejoice in it. And uh, I think that's why it's a little crazy because I wasn't raised that way either. I was having this conversation the other day. I was raised to be very stoic and very proper and very calm and collected about these things. I can't I'm imagine like, doing any of those behaviors. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not, and I, I was freed from those. Thanks be to God. <laughs> you know, I've been freed from them. And it's like, no, I rejoice in these gifts. I laugh with it. It's, it's like when I'm with family and friends, I love, I laugh. We tell jokes. We, we tell each other, we love each other. That's what we do. Cause why I'd Christ does it for us. So Absolutely. that's what Luther's all about. So that's what I'm going to keep being about. Let's keep doing that then. Forgiveness of sins for you for all. Thanks be to God. Amen. Pastor Hall, it's great to see you, my friend. I'll talk to you next time. Thanks, brother. It was fun times.